Do you have an entry-level DSLR like this one right here, which is the Canon T6i or perhaps the Nikon D3400, and you're taking good shots, but you want to make them much better and learn how to post-process? Stay tuned, this video is for you. I'm going to start off with what is post-processing and why would you want to use it. Now if you're new to the world of photography and you're shooting a Canon, a Sony, a Nikon, this right here happens to be the T6i, but I've done a lot of videos with the Nikon D3400. You might be taking those images and then saving them off and sending them on to friends without doing any post-processing. Now I believe that post-processing is where all the magic happens. And you can really do a lot in the world of creativity to make those images pop. So what is post-processing? Post-processing is what you do to the image after you take it. Now why would you want to do something to the image? Well because you can really enhance it. You can apply all types of creativity and I really believe that's where the polish happens to those images. If you look around across the net, you look at a lot of different professional photographers, it is very rare in my opinion, that they just take an image right out of the camera, don't do anything to it, and hand it off to a client. They're always doing something to that image. They might sharpen it a bit, they're going to crop it, they're going to do something to it. And more often than not, they're using a package called Lightroom. It's made by Adobe. And that is what we're going to go over in this video here. This might be the start of many in a series of how I use Lightroom. Now one thing I want you to understand as we get into this is that Lightroom is up to you when it comes to creativity. I'm going to show you my techniques, but my techniques may not be your techniques, and that's perfectly fine. It's just how I use Lightroom. And as we get into this, I took a recent trip to Chicago, and I took a handful of photos, and we're going to work with one of those photos. It was in downtown Chicago. Now, I want you to know that when I shoot, I shoot in RAW. Now why do I shoot in RAW? It's because you can pull all kinds of details from that image and it's native to the camera. So the camera is not compressing anything. You're going to get everything that camera was capable of capturing at the time. And that is the benefit to shooting RAW. As we step into this, I think you'll see what I mean. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and jump into the tutorial. And I have an option of creating a video of myself left in the corner as we go through the tutorial, which I'm not going to do. I've done that before in other videos and I find it a little distracting. If you as a subscriber like to see me while we're going through the edits, leave a comment, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to assume let's not do it. Because as we go forward in this series, I'm going to do other videos when I come across images and I'm going to show you as I continue to use Lightroom and the tips and tricks that I use that may be helpful to you. So with all that said, let's go ahead and jump right into an image and let's have some fun. This is an image that I captured in downtown Chicago as I was walking across the street. Now this is a sunset picture and you can see how the sun is hitting the buildings here on the left and it's being reflected back to this building here on the right. Now when I took this image it really wasn't this dark um, but this was taken in RAW and you can look at the settings that were applied to the camera. Right here it was 1 1,000th of a second at an f-stop of 10 with an ISO of 320. You can see I had my 18 to 200 mil zoom on the camera and it shot at 52. Now when you look at this right here you would think you might be able to get the ISO down to 100 if the f-stop was say at maybe 8. Maybe if it was a little, a little more open it would allow for a little more light or if the shutter speed was dialed back a little bit. I don't know that it really needed to be at one one thousandth of a second, but then again, when you're jogging across the street and you don't have much time to take the image, I'm not quite sure what the settings were at the time. I, I may have been in aperture mode. Uh, when I am in aperture mode, I do like to dial up just a little bit, especially when doing landscape type shots just to get more focus. Nonetheless, we have this image here and we're going to work with this and I'm going to go ahead and just jump right in. Keep in mind that as I step into this, this is just personal preference and when you get into Lightroom, as you jump in, 
there are many, many settings and you can do a lot of different things and there is no one right absolute way. So keep that in mind. So let's go ahead and step right in. And I'm gonna talk just briefly about the workflow. So what I like to do is on the right hand side over here, this is my palette and I kind of like to start with cropping. So cropping is right here. If there are any adjustments I wanna to make to the image, I'll do so right out of the gate. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit this and I always like the rule of thirds. Now in this case, this is a little bit different. I kind of like to keep this symmetrical with the road going up right here. And you can see how we have this opening between the buildings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this image from right to left just a little bit because what I'd like to do is give my viewer, uh, I want their attention to be pulled right into the center of the image, which is what we have right here. Now I think this looks pretty good. And I'm gonna go ahead and take the top down just a little bit. And the other thing I'm gonna look at is lines. So if you can see, this looks like it's tilting just a little bit to the right side. And I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna hold down. You can see how it presents a finer grid. And I'm just gonna rotate just a little bit counterclockwise. And I'm doing this because I'm trying to line it up so I get a straight line on the left-hand side. And you can see the building right here, I'm just trying to create this straight line. And you can see how it's shifted the overall image. I think that looks relatively good from a cropping perspective, so I'm gonna leave it at that. Go ahead and hit Done. And I'm gonna start off with the top right here. I'm gonna hit Basic. Now when I get into Basic, I always kind of like to look at the exposure. Now when I look at this particular exposure, it looks to me like the overall image is a little dark. And keeping in mind that um, you can take a look at the white balance as well. I feel okay with this white balance, but what's nice is when you shoot raw, you can click on the drop down here and you have other options. So you'll notice within your camera, you have the ability to set the white balance at the time of the shot to daylight, cloudy, shade, you can go custom. Um, you can see this is how the camera grabbed the image. But if I do want to change it, RAW allows me this ability to dramatically change the white balance. So in this case, I'm going to leave it as shot. Now I'm going to come down here to exposure and I'm going to brighten it up just a bit. And so what I'm going to do is increase it uh, just a tad. How about there? I'm going to put it right about there. Plus 0.12. I'm going to come down to contrast. Now contrast, I don't like to do a whole lot with, and when I do, it's gonna be relatively subtle. In this case, I'm gonna bump it to, say, right about there, a plus 12. Now, the difference between contrast and clarity, I like clarity more. I think contrast is more overall, um, so we'll hit clarity in just a minute. So stepping down, we're gonna go ahead and hit the highlights. Now, when you hit the highlights, what I like to do is I like to back these off quite a bit. And you'll see what this does to the image. It presents more detail. Look at the clouds right there in the middle. If I take this up, those clouds are virtually gone. I take it back down and you'll see them come through. On any of these sliders, feel free to go to one extreme and the other to know what that slider does. And if you're off for any reason, Double click on the label and it will reset it just like that. So with our highlights, I'm gonna go ahead and back this off quite a bit to say about there, minus 43. I kind of like that. It's bringing the clouds uh, back into detail. And with that, I like to take the shadows, especially in this case, because there's a lot that's dark here. Now let's take a look at what happens when I go to pull the shadows, take a look at that. Look at the detail coming through. Is that crazy or what? Let's go ahead and take that back. We started off here. When I go to bring those shadows out, look at all that detail. Now this is in part the beauty of using RAW or shooting in RAW. So I like that. I'm gonna go 100% on that one right there. And again, our highlights are at minus 43. Um, I let me show you a little tip and trick on the whites and the blacks. Um, I'm going to go, go ahead and hold down the Alt key. And when I do this, I'm going to move the slider. And you can kind of see what happens here. When I do this, when you see the highlights come through, that means it's starting to clip. And one idea, one concept 
is I'm going to reset this to zero, hold down the Alt key, and I'm going to move the whites to the right. And you can do this until you start seeing some clipping and then release. Now that's plus 14. I don't feel that I need to apply uh, overall uh, whiteness to this, so I'm just going to back it off to zero. But you can do the same thing with the blacks. Hold down the Alt key and drag it to the left, and look at that. So that's what's starting to clip right there. And if we release, it's just too dark. But nonetheless, I'm going to leave these two alone for now. I'm going to step down to Clarity. And with Clarity, I always like to bump this up to some extent. This really does a good job at bringing out some details. And again, if you're not quite sure, go to the extreme, see what this does. But I kind of like it uh, right about there. I think this really kind of enhances the image and brings a little more detail to it. So with that, let's go ahead and step down to Vibrance. Now Vibrance is going to give this image some punch. If I take it this way, look at what it does. It doesn't pull all the color, but it does give it sort of a, a wintry, cold look. I actually kind of like that too. Let's go the other way with it. And you can see it's just an overkill on colors. So I think there's a good balance in here. I'm just going to I'm just going to pull it, say, to about 19. I kind of like this right here. The image I'm looking for is a nice sort of warmer image. So with that said, I kind of like the way we're set up. I'm going to go ahead and skip saturation for now. Saturation will give it an additional bump. I mean, look at that. Isn't that crazy? Again, I, I really don't want to oversaturate the image, so I'm just going to bring it back the way it is. I'm going to go ahead and close this basic band right here, and I'm going to step down into the tone curve. Now, with the tone curve, what a lot of people like to see is sort of this, this S shape. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So you take your lights way up and your darks way down. Now that's, that's kind of a crazy look and I'm not into that at all, um, but I just want to show you the extremes. And so what I'm going to do though is I am going to take my lights up just a little bit, um, say till about right there. Gives a nice little punch and it's not overkill. And then I'm going to bring my darks into play, and I'm going to come down to just a little bit, say, I don't know, right in that range. I kind of like that. I think that's striking a nice balance. I'm going to leave my shadows alone. And on highlights, I'm going to let this be as well, but if you wanted to, you can kind of punch this up a little bit. Or not, well, actually, I'm seeing a little punch in there. Let's go ahead and leave the highlights up just a little. Let me bring this down How about right there. I think that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and close this band down, and I'm going to step into this. Um, now there's three things to pull out of this. You have your hue, your saturation, and luminance. Now I typically don't come in here unless I really want to be a little creative with the coloring, and in this case, um, I don't know if there's a whole lot I want to do, except I do want to take a look at my orange and my yellows, uh, because I want to enhance this image so that we have that warm sort of feel to it. So what happens if we pull it out here? We kind of lose it. You pull it back, it gives it too much. So what I'm going to do is let's go with, um, I don't know, how about that? I kind of like what that does to the image. It brings a little more orange into it. And with our yellows, it's kind of the same thing when we do this. Ooh, yeah, I kind of like that sort of warm look right there. Again, it's just personal preference on what you might like but I kind of like what this did to the image and how it brings that warmth to it. So I kind of like the way that looks. I'm going to leave it at that for now. Now I'm not really going to get into much on the saturation of the hue. The hue is the actual changing of the color itself, and that's not what I'm in for. Saturation will give it some additional boost, but uh, luminance is a little more subtle, so we're just going to leave it there for now. Let's close the band, and I'm going to step down into split toning. So. Split toning is kind of interesting. What this does is it'll apply color to the lights and it'll also split and apply colors to the darks. So that's kind of what the split toning is all about. Now in this case, you can apply as much saturation as you like. And I'm gonna just boost up the saturation a little bit so we can see what we're doing. Now with the orange right here, it's kind of what I'm shooting for is I wanna find a I just want to bring a little more, a little more orange to it, which I think is going to kind of be, I'm going to boost this up. Ooh, look at that. You can kind of see what that does. I, I kind of like that kind of strong warmth in there. I'll back it off to just right about there. Yeah, 
Let's go ahead and take this up a little more. Again, it's personal preference, and I just kind of like to see that sort of really kick in. I like this right about here. I think that looks good. Um, on our shadows, let's take a look at what we want to do here. And so I'm going to come back up here to my highlights and see if we can. There we go. Kind of like that a little better. Okay, back to our shadows. Um, let's see what we got here. I don't want to do a whole lot to the shadows. I want it to be relatively subtle. What I want to do is apply some warmth or maybe a little orange or a little red kind of to the darker areas. And I'm going to back off my saturation just a little bit. But I kind of like the hue and where it is. And I think that looks good right about there. Now these little switches right here, if you're not quite sure and you kind of want to see what it looked like before, I'm going to turn it off and turn it back on. Turn it off turn it back on. Now it's relatively subtle as you can see, but it's just what I what I want to apply to this image. I really like that. I think it looks good. Let's step down into detail. So the detail, uh, this is where you can apply the sharpening and noise reduction. These two are very powerful and they work very well in my opinion. Um, I typically come in on the detail and apply some amount of sharpening and I like to come up quite a bit here I really want to uh, sharpen up the lines. Now what I want you to pay attention to is this. This is your level of sharpening. So you can get as aggressive as you want or as little as you want. The masking is what's important. So what I'm going to do is hold down the Alt key and I'm going to slide this to the right. And you'll notice right out of the gate this is all white. What does that mean? Well that means that sharpening is applied to the entire image and I really don't want that. So I'm going to slide it further to the right and anything that you see in white is where the sharpening is being applied. This is the masking and it's a great little feature. So you can take it all the way to the right if you want, which you're really not going to get much sharpening out of that. I'm going to go ahead and dial this back a little bit. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to find where I just want to sharpen up the lines essentially, just those edges. And that looks good to me. So the sharpening is now applied to a lot of these vertical lines just as you saw in the mask right here. Now, noise reduction, this is something to really pay attention to if you're shooting at a super high ISO. I've done some videos in the past where I've shot at 12,000 or 6,400, and in those cases, you're going to want to really apply the noise reduction. In this case, I'm not seeing much noise at all on this particular image, so I'm not overly concerned by this at all. But if I did want to apply noise reduction, I could come in here, slide to the bar to the right, and you'll see, you really aren't seeing much of a difference here. You know, you see a little bit, I guess, when you slide it back and forth. But for now, I'm just going to leave my noise reduction turned off. And let's go ahead and close that band. Let's come into lens correction. So lens correction, Lightroom has the ability, in some instances, to know the lens that you've used to capture that particular image. And they can apply corrections for barrel distortions and things like that. So in this particular case, I'm going to go ahead and check these, and you can see what it did right there. I'm going to uncheck, check, uncheck, check. But it's there to correct any barrel distortion. And it may or may not be of benefit, but go ahead and check all three of these. And I really like the way that's looking right now. When we get into effects, this is vignetting. Now what's nice about vignetting, and I, I, I like to apply vignetting um, around the edges to the left so it's going to darken it. Again, go ahead and play with this. See what, see what it does. I mean, that's, that's way over the top in my opinion. This takes it white. You don't want that. What I always like to do is slide it just a little bit to the left. And the reason for this is to have the person who's viewing the image focus into the center of the image. Now I can go back center here because it is kind of nice to capture this, but I'm going to pull just a little bit of vignetting on it say to about right there. And I like the way that looks. And when it comes down to camera calibration, I really don't do anything with this, but again, you can feel free to have some fun with that. Now, when you're looking at this image and you say, well, how is this? How did this compare to what we started with? I'm going to go ahead and click this down here, and this will show you a before and after. So you can see a dramatic difference here this is our before, this is our after. 
Now, as I look at this, it kind of looks to me when I look at the crop like we got to twist it a little more. So I'm going to go ahead and make this happen. Again, it's just personal preferences, but I want to bring it back just a little bit. Don't want to look like my buildings are are uh, leaning at an angle. It might be a little over the top. Let's bring it back slightly. And there you go. So there we are. Before, after. So I really like the way this ended up right here. And this to me is what I would showcase and hand off if I needed to to someone else. I hope this video has demonstrated the importance of post-processing and inspired you to do the same with any of your older images. Now keep in mind, I shot that particular image we just went over in RAW, but you can do the same thing with JPEGs. Although if you do shoot in RAW, you have a much better chance of pulling details from those shadow dark areas. I was amazed when I looked at that and we went from an image that really wasn't usable in my opinion to something that was very presentable and very good in the end. So I always like to see that. And I want you to understand that not every image takes that long to post process. I slowed it down intentionally so that I could describe what was going through in my mind. But after you do it and you do it a lot, next thing you know, you'll be whipping right through those images speedy quick and it works very well. Something else to understand is that Lightroom offers the ability to auto sync. And what this means is if you take a lot of images under the same conditions and you spend time working on one particular image and applying a lot of those different settings, you can take those changes that you made to that one image and auto sync those to the other images in similar conditions. So it's really important to understand that. I use it all the time and it works great. When I first got into post-processing, I thought, wow, do I really have to spend all this time on all the images? No. Keep in mind that you can target specific images if you want. This is where your creativity comes in, and you might see one particular image that you want to spend quite a bit of time on because you really like that image. Maybe it's a landscape image, or it's a sport image, or street photography, whatever it is. But this is where your creativity can really come into play. The camera, like this right here, is great to take the foundational image. I mean, you need a camera for that purpose, but more often than not, the polish is really going to come in in post-processing. Really important to understand that concept. Now, if you have any questions, post them below. I'll do my best to help you out. And if you would like to know more about how to do the install of Lightroom and where to get it from, let me know that as well, and I can create additional videos on those topics. I'm going to post a link below in the description as to where you can get Lightroom from. Just know I'm a big fan of the standalone version and not so much the monthly subscription, but that's really a personal preference. The version I use is years old and it works great for me. Um, I may not upgrade until I see a must-have kind of feature and I have yet to find that. So nonetheless, I hope this video has helped you out and if you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and if you haven't done so, subscribe to the channel. It's called Real World. Until the next video, take care of yourself and be safe.